Hey, good morning, everybody. Hachoo! 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 Everybody knows I'm allergic to dogs, and we've got two dogs on the set, and they're not bothering me in the least, so evidently my Zyrtex working. <laughs> I have um, had every kind of dog known to man, but last week I fell in love with the dog that was visiting ball ground, and so today you get to meet this beautiful specimen of a nine-month-old. He's only nine months old. His name is Ozzy. He is very well-mannered, but a few weeks ago, he might not have been the favorite kid at kindergarten if he'd have shown <laughs> up. Now, he is the favorite child because he is minding so well, and there's a reason, and I would love for you to meet his trainers because um, if your dogs are getting out of line and you're like, what am I going to do? You're going to call these guys, and they're going to help you out, and so they will take your mean little brat and they will turn it into an amazing specimen of beauty and so ozzy take it away there's ozzy now yes. tyler you want to introduce yes. everybody to ozzy look at him how y'all doing my name is tyler i'm the owner of off leash canine north georgia i have ozzy here with me he's our recent star student he is and so beautiful yes he is and then i have trainer brandon here with me we have canine driver who's a yellow lab Asleep behind the desk, of course, early morning. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but Mr. Ozzy here, he just completed our two-week board and train program where, and everyone knows how German Shepherds are. Mm -hmm. They're crazy little monsters, and they need some manners. The yes. jumping, the play biting, the not coming on call, extreme leash pulling. And like you said, Ozzy's only nine months, so yes. he's about 85 pounds. He's so beautiful. He's going to he get bigger. He is so incredibly he beautiful. He's going to get much bigger. So. We had a lot of work ahead of us, right? And in mm -hmm. just two weeks, we taught him everything from come, sit, place, down, heel, door manners, food manners, greeting manners. Um, and his, his owners were blown away. Yeah, um, yeah. Just taking a crazy nine-month-old puppy. He's precious. Yes, and he's super intelligent. Yeah. Um, and every dog is different, right? Whether it's the German Shepherd or it is a Yellow Lab, it doesn't matter. Every dog is different and they learn certain ways. Mm -hmm. um, so. What we offer is various programs. We have board and trains, a one week or a two week, depending on the goals you have with your dog. And then we also offer private lessons. One-on-one mm -hmm. -on -one training, you, your dog, and a trainer to focus on what the dog truly needs, mm -hmm. right, in, in certain commands. And when is it too late to shape an animal? It is never too late. Okay. So we can start training. That's good news because yes. a lot of people just give up and, and return their dog maybe to where they adopted it or Correct. whatever. Yeah, Correct. they give up. So don't yes. give up. Correct. And we're huge fans of adoptions. Mm -hmm. And when you get a rescue dog, they need certain help, right? Because mm -hmm. um, a lot of them don't have, they have trust issues, low confidence. Low confidence right. in household pets is a major thing. Um, so. When is it a good time to start? Uh, as soon as possible. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. We can start training puppies um, with e-collar training there at four months of age. And then the oldest dog I think we've trained is about 12 years old. Or 12 um, years. Mm -hmm. Around 12. So mm -hmm. it's never too late. A, an old dog can learn new tricks. Uh -huh. That's a big thing. Uh -huh. um, and then we just opened up a new course for the puppies. The kind of 10 week to 16 week old puppy at the click or treat training, right? To start working on getting their attention quicker rather than later, mm -hmm, <laughs> you know? So, mm -hmm. um, and when it comes to puppies, right? Cause everyone loves a puppy. So when you get a puppy, everyone's so concerned about the dog staying, right? Right. When you have such a young dog, I want the dog to be able to listen on the first or second command, mm -hmm. right? S the stay will come, but let's focus on getting their attention and them understanding uh, what we're asking, right? You mm -hmm. want to open up the line of communication with your dog. Mm -hmm. Off, 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 good boy. Um, so, it's never too late. It's never too late. Right, yeah. right. Now let's talk about Off. driver a little bit because yeah. um, we're going to have to get Brandon to go up and, and show him because we can't see him from camera. Yeah. But is he, you said he's a year. Will he get bigger than this? Uh, he's pretty exactly. muscular. I think he might be a little overweight because oh. you want the rib cage to sh just to show just yeah, a little just bit. Yeah, just a tiny bit. But he's He's precious and he's so relaxed. I wish y'all could see him. He's yeah, he, just laid he's out over here. Old, he's a little lazy, but he's your typical lab. Yeah. You know, he, yeah. he doesn't have very good food manners. He likes jumping on people and kids. He wants to meet every single dog in person he meets. Wow. So those are things we got to work on with him. Yeah, yeah. And and see, but that to me is normal. Is that normal that they are friendly and they want to meet and greet? Oh, yeah, that's very typical. Yeah, because we had a black lab who hated everybody. Mm -hmm. And my daughter got got this dog when I think 
maybe eight weeks old, mm -hmm. but the dog hated everybody, barked, yeah. hated me, knew me for years and years and years, didn't like anybody. So for him to have this great disposition to me, and how long have y'all had him in training? About 10 days now. About 10 days. 10 days into his 14 day program. Mm -hmm. So he graduates mm -hmm. here in a few days. Um, but you know, a lot can be done in just the next few days. And uh -huh. he's looking great. You yeah. know, um, I've seen what trainer Brennan has, has already done with him and I have a full staff, you know, mm -hmm. so we cover from Blue Ridge to Blairsville to Ella J uh, to Dawsonville to Cumming, Canton, Dallas and Cartersville. So mm -hmm. we're all over North Georgia. Now, have either one of y'all ever seen a dog that you were just like, there is no hope for this dog? Not necessarily. Okay. Um, there are certain limitations to certain dogs because every dog is different. Yeah. Um, every dog has certain kind of issues, mm -hmm. whether it be aggression, reactivity, resource guarding. Um, there's no dog that's untrainable, um, but there are dogs that have certain limitations. Oh, and there's Ozzy. Call He's so habit, precious. <laughs> Ozzy, sit. There's definitely much, some dogs that are much harder to train, but yeah. we've never taken a step backward, only a step forward. Mm -hmm. Correct. That's good. Even yeah. if it's a small step, that's all that matters, because mm -hmm. we do get a lot of inquiries about aggressive dogs. Oh, mm -hmm. my dog doesn't like other dogs. That's fine. Mm -hmm. Your dog doesn't have to like every other dog, but your dog does have to tolerate just mm -hmm. how Ozzy is sitting here tolerating driver. They've never met before, right? Before today? They met one time before today. Okay. They, they trained together for a okay. one hour session. They met mm -hmm. one time for one hour mm -hmm. and they, they do very well with tolerating other dogs, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, and, and you know, Ozzy, he has issues with smaller dogs, mm -hmm. but he is able to hold a sit or a down and not lose his mind like your average dog would, right? Mm -hmm. He knows he has a job to do. He's working for me. So mm -hmm. if he holds a sit, a down, a place for 30 seconds while the little dog walks by, I'll take it. That's mm -hmm. a win, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. That is a win. You know, it's weird because remember when I walked out there to talk to you and I said, is it okay if I get near the dog? Yes. Because I had had two German Shepherds that you did not get out of your car at our house. Yes. You did not approach our door mm -hmm. at our house because yes. Kenai and Denali would have eaten you alive. Yeah. We had to introduce them to people yes. and it took a little while. So does he normally accept everybody? Because he was gentle the first time yes. I saw him. With, with his specific temperament, he loves everyone he's met. Kids, mm -hmm. adults, doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. um, he does great. But the big thing is that you have to know what kind of dog you have, mm -hmm. right? Every breed is different. Every dog is different. A German Shepherd, they're instinctively territorial, right. they're loyal dogs, right? So you have to know your breed. Mm -hmm. Even if you rescue a mixed breed dog, try and guesstimate what they're mixed with, Coon, Hound, Labrador, Rottweiler, whatever mm -hmm. it may be, mm -hmm. educate yourself on the breed. I, right. I, I can't stress that enough. Right. Know what kind of dog you have because <coughs> there's instincts, hundreds of years of breeding and instincts in the dog's head and that's what makes them think so you can kind of understand how your dog processes different scenarios. <laughs> yeah. We live next door to some people. We had a beagle that was you know, beagles run yes, and they, they, they're they looking for scent yeah. and next door we had a pretty mean vicious dog. Yeah. Well this mean vicious dog gets pregnant by the black lab down the street. Mm -hmm. She might have had a guest come over. <laughs> and births 10 puppies. Yeah. We found homes for all 10 puppies. All 10 of them had the most amazing black lab disposition. She was mean. She yeah. was a vicious dog. Yeah. The dogs, none of the puppies had her temperament. And I was so glad because I thought, you know, it was my neighbor's dog to begin with, but she kept hanging out at our house, but she kept attacking our beagle. And I was like, look, you're four times her size and right. quit doing this. But I couldn't stop her because she was vicious to me too. Mm -hmm. And I wish I could remember her breed. She was a red and white polka dot. It was a cattle dog of some kind that's right. trained to, to, to herd cattle. Yep. But she was so mean and so vicious. But when all the puppies came out, black labs, they were so good yeah. and they were so sweet. Yeah. <laughs> Are labs traditionally good dogs? Yes, they're, they're great family dogs. But with a lab, you kind of have to you know know that with labs, there are chewing problems, mm -hmm. right? They are a little uh, nutty. They can be super energetic and super lovely, um, but also they can be a little bit immature at times. Mm -hmm. uh, I would say the Labrador, the German Shepherd, and sometimes the Golden Retriever, they mature a little bit later than your average dog because mm -hmm. your average dog matures about two, two and mm -hmm. a half, right, mm -hmm. the adult. But a lot of Goldens and Shepherds, they're just crazy, 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 even labs till about the age of three. Wow. Um, so just kind of knowing what dog you have does help you because if mm -hmm. you get that golden retriever puppy, you get that chocolate lab puppy, 
you're in for a long haul of having <laughs> a little kid for about two, three years, right? right. And yeah. I would say that goes for any working breed, yeah. three years. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Working dogs, that's, 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 a, that's a whole other conversation where yeah. you need a lot more stimulation because mm -hmm. if you have that bulldog that wants to take an 18 hour nap, mm -hmm. if you get that yellow lab puppy, he's gonna sleep maybe a few hours and then he's full go, all wow. gas, no breaks. Yeah. Wow, yeah. wow. Yep. Well, it's so strange because when, I, when we got Kenan Denali, I was even afraid of them because they were like four when we got them yeah. and they had belonged to a police officer. Now, yeah. let's talk a little bit about your canine experience with tra training canine yeah. dogs. Yeah, so I worked for Forsyth in Dawson County um, mm -hmm. for seven years. Five out of the seven years I was a canine handler mm -hmm. um, and I had two working dogs, canine Boyke and Forsyth and then canine Pele and Dawson. Um, and those dogs are very expensive dogs, you know, that come from overseas and they have all this training, thousands of dollars of training. Mm -hmm. But the biggest thing I can say about law enforcement military canines uh, is that they're bred to be working dogs. Mm -hmm. They're bred specifically for work drive and purpose. Um, and a lot of people think, oh, my German Shepherd, I want it to be a personal protection dog. Well, hold on, a very small percentage of dogs have that temperament, mm -hmm. um, that on and off switch, right? That's why the working dogs you see on the street for law enforcement, they're bred to have that certain temperament and work drive. Mm -hmm. um, so our law enforcement dogs, minimum eight hours a week, every week of the year, doesn't matter, Christmas, Thanksgiving, mm -hmm. we have to train eight hours with that dog that week to maintain the training. Mm -hmm. So if a working dog like that needs all those hours every year, your household pet, still needs a couple hours a week, maybe one or two hours a week dedicated strictly to basic obedience of mm -hmm. come and sit and place down and heal. Um, it's, it's just all about the time and consistency of the training. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. and, and don't give up, you know, don't yes. give up, yeah. The biggest thing with dog training is patience. Mm -hmm. um, my wife would say I don't have much patience, uh, <laughs> but with dogs, you know, um, I'm different. You have to know what dog you're handling mm -hmm. and stay at it. Um, Potty training can be uh, the most difficult time of a dog's life. Mm -hmm. um, but if you stay consistent and you stay and have a good routine, mm -hmm. you're going to achieve it. Some mm -hmm. dogs take longer than others because, again, every dog is different. Mm -hmm. um, but consistency, having a schedule. Because if you have a puppy, you have a baby. Um, right. It's literally like having a child. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I remember with the kids, every time each child got a different breed of dog, because mm -hmm. we would go to the Atlanta Humane Society and we yeah. would come home with some weird breeds. And yeah. weird <laughs> every kid liked different dogs. Yeah. And the dog progressed well if the kid did what they were supposed to on routine. Correct. And the kids would forget to take the dog out and then we'd have an accident in the house and then yeah. mama would blow a gasket and I would get the bleach out yeah. and I would pitch a fit. Yeah. And it was, I blame the kid, not the dog, because the dog yeah. didn't, you know, the dog couldn't open the door and go outside. Right. And the kid forgot to take him out. So yeah. I think your consistency is more important than the dog's. Correct. You yes. know, you've got to be on track. Human error is a big thing. Mm -hmm. Humans are not perfect. Neither are dogs. Right? I don't, it doesn't matter how much training, but we can get them 99% of the way there, right? It's all mm -hmm. about, it's, it's on our part being consistent with the dog. Because um, again, human error happens. And the big thing I'll say is, is that as much as you train your dog, your dog does train you for certain responses. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. if mm -hmm. that water bowl, Ozzy, come. If that water bowl is empty, right? Uh -huh. He's gonna go lick that water bowl and he's going to say, hey mom, come fill my water bowl yeah. up. If they go to yeah. the back door, and they say, I need to go potty, they right. know you're going to get up and come open that door. Yeah. Right? Yeah, so yeah. they train us for certain responses all the time. Yeah, all absolutely. The time. Off, well, off, my son-in-law has this off. humongous German, what do you call it, Weinerheimer? Weinerheimer, yeah. yes. Ozzy, sit. This dog is like oh. huge, and oh. he sits on the couch, and if you walked in, yeah. you would think, oh, there's a person sitting on the couch because yeah. he sits there like a person. Yeah. He is so obedient, he minds so well, but he sent him for training. Correct, yeah. Because because he's so huge. Yeah. If he were to be out of control, it would be a bad out of control. Oh, yeah. Because he's a big boy. Yeah. But he loves everybody and everything. And we saw such a difference with his little bit of training. Yes. Just, and, you know, it doesn't take a lot. And that's a good point is it doesn't matter where you get your dog, how you get your dog down. It's it's about getting the training in when you first can, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Ozzy, down. I know you got a niche. <laughs> he's always I love itching. It. Ozzy, I down. love it. He's so cute.
Yeah. He's so Good cute. Boy. Well, you know, one of the things about Gilmer County Animal Shelter here, we have a great rescue program. Yes. And, and often during the year they offer specials, they offer deals, they have a lot of good volunteers mm -hmm. who go out there and, and walk the animals and spend time with them. Yeah. And, and that's so sad because when you walk by, I know when we went to the Atlanta Humane Society and I used to tell my husband, I said, why don't we do this all the time? And he said, yeah. well, it's a great way to take so, the kids somewhere that doesn't cost yeah. us a fortune. And yeah. I said, every time we leave, we have a dog. Yeah. Don't say yeah. it doesn't cost us a fortune. Good. But if you can walk in a, a, a shelter yeah. and not come home with a dog, shame on you. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's tough. It's, it's tough to go tough. in there because you yeah. feel for them, right? Yeah. And every every dog deserves a chance, right? Um, but the thing, and we offer 10% off for any rescue dog, any mm -hmm. county. Let us know where you got the dog from. We give 10% because we do want to help, right? Right. Private lessons or board and train, we want to help, and we can get your dog there. Um, the thing is, is that so people sweet. get a rescue, and... They coddle it and they love it, but at the end of the day, it's still a dog, and we mm -hmm. need to learn some manners, because if mm -hmm. not, your rescue, who probably is not used to that much love and attention and affection, or two meals a day, or mm -hmm. all these toys, or getting into a bed, right? That can mm -hmm. lead to resource guarding issues. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So getting training and treating your dog like a dog mm -hmm. is very, very important. Mm -hmm. That I wanted, to, I wanted to touch on that. We're gonna take a commercial break, yeah. but I wanna talk about, yeah, it's a dog. Yes. Quit treating it like a yes. child. It's a dog. Exactly. And and that's something my daughter never learned yeah. because her dog was treated completely like a child. Less right. love, more leadership. Yeah. There you yeah. go. That's, that's a great one. Yeah. So we're going to take a commercial break and we will be back. And you're going to get to meet Driver when we come back. Yeah. <laughs> Whether you're in the mood for chicken strips, a delicious burger, our classic banana split, or an upside down thick blizzard treat, we've got you covered. Hot and fresh food every day, every time. And delicious DQ soft serve make the perfect pair at your favorite place. Not fast food, fan food fast. Your Blue Ridge, Ella Day, and Jasper Dairy Queens are your meet, eat, and treat headquarters. Thank you for choosing DQ, how may I serve you? Georgia Medical Treatment Center now has two locations to bring you the high quality holistic care you've come to know and expect. We treat neck, back, and joint pain with chiropractic care and injection-based treatment without the need for surgery or prescription painkillers. Our medical weight loss program can also provide relief while ridding your body of toxins, pounds, and inches while improving your overall health. Call today for a free consultation, 770-345-2000, or go online to georgiamtc.com. You know, how you feel on the inside yeah. is just as important to me as how you feel on the outside. Aw, oh, Daddy. <laughs> my grown-up, grown-up, everywhere and every way, guarantee I'll be your my grown-up, and I know you're there. I'm your grown-up, and you know I care. Cause it's you and me, and me, and, me and, you. and you. So when you are okay, or not okay, I'll take care of you. swimming in the sea or splashing in the pool making a masterpiece or just making memories writing a great American novel or writing your term paper that's due tomorrow whatever you do in life farmers is here to protect it for all your insurance needs call Donald Curtis in Blue Ridge
Okay, you've got to meet the star of the show. And now Ozzy is going to give up a little time, and we're going to let you meet Driver. So do you want to get over there and talk about a little bit about Driver? Yeah, and we'll talk about Driver. He is so beautiful, and he is so well-mannered. He's been literally laying here at my feet kind of napping. So pretty cool. Let's talk about him. So this is Driver. He's a one-year-old Labrador Retriever. And some of the problems he had was jumping on people, couldn't hold a sit very long, terrible with food manners. <laughs> and so now we have him on a place cot, and there's four rules to place. You want to start off with short durations, object must have edges, and if you pick it, you win it. So if he has problems getting on it, you have to help him get on it, even if it takes you 20 minutes. And whatever you pick, he owns it. So you wouldn't want to use, like, your counter as a place cot <laughs> no. or no. your car of your hood. No. And whatever you pick as a place, he should be allowed to get on it whenever he wants. And you can also use this when you go to the vet, when you go to, uh, what's another example? When that doorbell rings yep. and you're trying to bring in some house friends and guests, instead of your dog jumping on the people, driver, go place. Or if you're trying to eat dinner and not have the dog try and get a piece of your cheeseburger, your mm -hmm. steak, mm -hmm. tell them to go place, right? Yeah. It's good, it's, it's, it's a long duration command where it's comfortable, it can be a dog bed, place cot. If you allow your dog on the couch, have them place on the couch. Mm -hmm. It's simply to give him some independence and let you kind of live your life and he's just relaxing on the place cot or dog bed. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's really good. It's probably one of the easiest commands to teach, but it's a lot of people figure out it's the most useful. Oh, right. yeah. Yeah, because yeah. if you have little kids running around with chicken nuggets, you don't want the dog chasing eating chicken nuggets exactly. out of their hands, right? Yeah. Have your yeah. dog place for 10, 15 minutes and yeah. give them a bone to stimulate their mind and let them kind of be them on their place. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Let, let me ask you about this because we haven't talked about what, what irritates dogs, but my Rottweiler, I knew that she did not like anybody screaming or speaking loudly. Mm -hmm. And so... Um, had a kid come in and and the kid screamed a lot. And I yeah. told his mom, I said, you got to keep him quiet because Gizmo doesn't like that. Yeah. Well, Gizmo lunged for him and caught his lip with mm -hmm. her fingernail, toenail, yeah. and and cut his lip. And yeah. oh my gosh, they blew a gasket. They were mad. They were angry. And I had warned them. Gizmo does not like loud sounds. Yeah. Doesn't like screaming. Doesn't like yelling. Mm -hmm. You learn what your dog will tolerate. Correct. So I think you should train the people around your dog as well. Correct, and I love that you use the word tolerate, mm -hmm. okay, because there is no such thing as a fix or a cure. We train to tolerate, like, mm -hmm. a, like we said, we, train, we have dogs tolerate each other. Same thing with kids. If your dog is not around kids every day, mm -hmm. your dog might find kids annoying because they're like, wow, that little human is loud, obnoxious, right. screaming. It's hitting me instead of petting me, right? Exactly. Dogs yeah. don't understand that. And yeah. kids, kids are tough. Um, yeah. So the big thing is that you do an excellent job like you. You let the child's parents know, hey, my dog's not used to being around kids. Hopefully they Screaming respect kids. that. Yeah. yeah, they respect that and they keep kind of a safe distance, right? Because if you want your dog to be good around kids, guess what? You mm -hmm. have to train around kids, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So that's the big thing is that when we take these dogs for board and train programs, we get them in all sorts of environments and mm -hmm. we send our clients uh, pictures and videos every day of what we're working on. Mm -hmm. So if you're like, hey, I'm going to have a baby here in a year. I want my dog to be more accommodating around children. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Right. Mm -hmm. We try and get them around loud screaming kids at parks or playgrounds. Um, we'll go to city centers, you know, loud noises. Uh, it's all about the exposure, but mm -hmm. also the consistency, where mm -hmm. we go there every day and we build that confidence in the mm -hmm. dog to, hey, you can hold a place, you can hold a down command and let little kids run past you. Mm -hmm. It's just about consistency mm -hmm. and desensitizing. Mm -hmm. And one of the other things, I'm glad you brought that up about having babies. Mm -hmm. When my daughter was about to have a child, her dog was the little poodle that was spoiled rotten. Yes. I mean, this dog was not just spoiled, it was rotten. Yeah. <laughs> so. We were afraid that this dog would be so jealous of this baby, we would have right. a problem. Well, we did. Mm -hmm. And the dog would jump up in the baby's bed and cramp oh, in really? the baby's bed. Wow. To show, this is my human, this Correct. is my domain. I don't know what you brought that little child into this house for. Yes. And we had a serious problem. And so the dog had to go live with the grandmother. Yes. Because the dog was at that time seven years old. Mm -hmm. and. So yeah. that story it reminds, was an issue. that story reminds me most exactly of a client we just um, I had trainer Sarah work with. Trainer Sarah lives here in LJ as mm -hmm. well. 
Um, but she worked with an Australian Shepherd. The dog was six years old. They had a baby. The dog started to growl and mm -hmm. um, showed odd behavior around the baby. Well, this was their first child, mm -hmm. and this was an only dog. So when they brought a baby in the house, all that attention goes to the baby. Mm -hmm. So the dog was starting to show some reactivity and even resource guarding mm -hmm. um, from the baby. Yeah. So the big thing is getting a set foundation of obedience, simple mm -hmm. obedience, such as go place or come and sit, right? Simple stuff to build the respect up of the owners. And we give the tools to the owner of, hey, you can demand respect from your dog because mm -hmm. there's a reason dogs live with us. They share the same emotions of love, anger, fear, anxiety, sadness, um, depression, and even respect, mm -hmm. right? So we can get the respect up for you, the owner, from your own dog. You're able to take care of your child and get the respect your dog understands that you have it under control. Mm -hmm. Go place or lay down. I got this, right? Mm -hmm. It's all about setting that line and setting boundaries and giving you more control in your household because mm -hmm. we all have lives to live, right? Mm -hmm. So these tools help you achieve that mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. and that's funny that you said lives to live my son-in-law that i adore um <clears throat> puts his dog he, he is such a great dog person yeah. but when he travels he has to board the dog yes. and for business often he travels or if he goes to alaska to see my granddaughter he has to board the dog mm -hmm. but he chooses a place that has good ethics and yes. and and makes the dog kind of live a normal lifestyle. Yes. You know, you don't put them in a cage and you don't forget them. You don't uh -huh. choose a place like that. So he goes and checks it out yes. like he's sending his kid to the Hilton. Yeah, you know, <laughs> I mean seriously. So, and I think that's important because and if you it travel, is. it you is because if you choose a place, if, if you and again, there's a lot of great boarding facilities out there. Um, definitely do your homework on it mm -hmm. because if you send your dog to a boarding facility and it's like a day camp and you're going on a week vacation, a two week vacation, your dog's gonna go there and there's no manners. Mm -hmm. There's nothing. It's, you know, a lot of dogs playing and getting energy out and that's great, I love it, but there's no manners in that scenario. Mm -hmm. So when you pick your dog up and they come home, you're like, oh like, my God. Act like a wild child, you're like, what happened? You did so good. Well, yeah. you just spent a week at daycare and yeah. he is a crazy man, you yeah. know? So yeah. um, they're great, but there's no manners and, you know, boarding facilities and that goes to shelters. There's mm -hmm. a reason why the shelter dogs, they behave and they jump. Well, they're jumping for attention because that's what they had to do in the shelter to get the people's attention. Right. So when you get the dog home, it's all about setting your boundaries. Um, we even train our dogs that you sit at the door, the people go in first, and then we release you, and then you go through the door after everybody else. So door manners, we're huge on door manners. Mm -hmm. So it all comes back to training the basics and um, sometimes you have to be more stubborn than your own dog, mm -hmm. <laughs> out stubborn mm -hmm. your dog, you know, mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, that's crazy. Now, when when you look at the different breeds, um, I, I think that I was told that Pekingese were raised, um, they were guards in palaces, mm -hmm. and and so the Pekingese are kind of prima donnas and they do think they run the show. Mm -hmm. And most of the time they're friendly and good, but I was telling you about mine that bit everybody. Yes. And she never stopped biting. Yeah. She just bit. You just had to get used to it. And unfortunately, um, and it was it was a rescue, right? She was. About how old? She was about three when I got her. Three? Yeah. So there are, you know, certain behaviors that were set at a young age and survival instincts possibly mm -hmm. till you got her at the age of three. Um, so the thing is, is a little bit of training, good correction, showing them and your dog tolerating other people. Mm -hmm. She doesn't have to like and get pets from everybody. Um, she has to hold a sit or hold mm -hmm. it down while you have a conversation and she doesn't bite someone. She, mm -hmm. she can do that, right? She can tolerate for a short period of time. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it's, it, 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 it all comes back to, you know, the, you, the owner, letting them know, hey, I got this. Just hold a sit, hold it down. We'll be done here shortly. Right? Mm -hmm. it, it's as simple as that. I can't imagine telling Sugar to sit and be good. Yeah. Cause she and <laughs> the one big thing I love to stress is that not every dog likes every person they meet. They don't oh, like sure. every dog they meet. Yeah. Um, yeah. And there's a big problem when we're out training our dogs. People ask, oh, can I pet? Yes, you may pet, but some people come up and start petting while, and then they ask. I'm like, what if this dog was aggressive? Oh, yeah. And then oh, it, yeah bit your child or your hand. Yeah. Now we have yeah. a different situation on yeah. our hands. So yeah. I can't stress that enough. Please ask anybody, a trainer, a person out in public, can we please pet your dog or say hi? And mm -hmm. we let the person know if the dog is aggressive or reactive or even good with kids mm -hmm. or we're just mm -hmm. training to tolerate children. Yeah. So big differences.
big difference. And we were talking about going to the doggy park because um, when Motley was alive, and sadly Motley died from a brain tumor, but Motley was the dog that hated other dogs. Mm -hmm. Loved people, great people dog, yeah. hated other dogs. Yes. Was a rescue and a very muscular, beautiful, beautiful dog. Yeah. Just a beautiful dog. But going to a doggy park with Motley was mm -hmm. a disaster. You had to choose a time early in the morning when everybody else was in the bed to let him run and get the energy, you know. Yeah. But you could never, yeah. after multiple trainings, still didn't do well. And that then just like dogs have to like every person, the dog, your dog does not have to like every dog. Mm -hmm. I can promise you, if, if you have the most friendly golden retriever, I promise you there's a dog out there in the world that your dog probably doesn't like or is not too friendly with. Mm -hmm. um, Dog park can be great, but choosing the right time of day to take mm -hmm. your dog is mm -hmm. probably very important. Um, it's like imagining throwing a, taking your child to its first kindergarten class and there's a room full of kids and you say, okay, go make friends. Mm -hmm. The kid's crying. They don't know a single kid in that class and they just want their mommy. Mm -hmm. the same thing. You take your, your dog to a dog park and there's 10, 12, 20 other dogs and you say, go play. Mm -hmm. Well, if your dog's not used to it or that's too much stimulation, that can bring out aggression, mm -hmm. reactivity, mm -hmm. to where they hide between your legs and they start snarling and snipping or get into a dog fight. Mm -hmm. um, so it's literally about slowly introducing it. Mm -hmm. Dog parks can be great, but again, not every dog in there should be there. Mm -hmm. That's a big thing I exactly. try to stress too. Yeah. Um, so it's just about, <coughs> again, it circles <coughs> right back to knowing your dog. Exactly. Is that something they enjoy or is that something that you want them to enjoy, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. um, they're probably yeah. like, oh my God, they're taking me back to the dog park. Yes. I don't want to yeah. go to that dog park. And that's like a lot of dogs, <laughs> they don't like going to the vet. Well, yeah. I don't like going to the doctor because I get poked and prodded and right. all that stuff. Same thing yeah. with a dog. They're yeah. a bunch of strangers poking and prodding. Yeah. So your dog not liking the vet, it's normal, but having good obedience, right? Giving them confidence. So not mm -hmm. only do we help with teaching your dog commands, right? But two other things. We're opening up a line of, co of communication to where if you give your dog a command, they know what you're asking them to do, mm -hmm. right? Because mm -hmm. we've done hundreds of repetitions, but also desensitizing, right? Um, and getting them to gain confidence in all sorts of scenarios. Whether you're here in the square in LJ and the roundabout, there's a bunch of loud motorcycles, mm -hmm. right? If your dog's never mm -hmm. heard that before, they're gonna freak out, yeah. right? But we help and in introduce that to them using obedience. Hey, you can hold it down, you can place on this stone wall while cars drive by, and then we release them and give them love, attention, and affection. Mm -hmm. So it's about desensitizing. That was so weird when, uh, because you talk about traffic mm -hmm. <coughs> in ball ground. If you've yeah. been to ball ground, oh, yeah. there are 9,000 million cars yeah. and trucks <laughs> going by at all times. Always. And Ozzy just sat there. Yeah. And I was sitting, I was inside my office and I was watching that dog and I'm like, oh my God, Keenan yes. Denali would have eaten somebody alive yeah. by now. And I, that's why I went out and talked to you because yeah. I was like, holy crap. Yeah, and <laughs> there's a reason we were there, right? So we, yeah. so we specify his training to learn his commands, but we also go to different locations on purpose. So mm -hmm. when Ozzy came to us, he was chasing cars. Mm -hmm. So he saw a car, he'd chase it. Yeah. And we had a conversation for about 20 minutes and who knows how many hundreds of cars passed us in and 20 minutes. And he just sat there. And he, yes, exactly. Yeah. Even the loud semi trucks going by, yeah. motorcycles, um, he did great, right? Yeah. So it's about, yeah. and that was two days before he graduated. So we achieved our goal with him not chasing cars anymore, mm -hmm. um, but we helped desensitize that. And then we educated his owners on, hey, here's how we do it, here's how you do it, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, and then we also have free refresher lessons with mm -hmm. our board and train programs. Yeah. So the best thing with us is you send your, us your dog at any point in that dog's life, we guarantee free refresher lessons. Whether mm -hmm. it's six weeks, six months, six years, call us. Mm -hmm. We meet with you to go back over what issues you're having absolutely free. Mm -hmm. yeah. And again, you're talking about even the canines that you used in police work, they have to work every single day. So absolutely. people, we get busy with life and people forget that that dog needs to be refreshed. Oh, and, yes. and so that's so important. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Because if you don't use it, you lose it. Mm -hmm. So if you haven't, if, it, <laughs> if it's cold outside, which we all know it gets cold in North Georgia, yeah. if it's icy and snowy and you don't take your dog on a walk for a month, month and a half, two months, mm -hmm. the next time you go, oh, let's go to the park, it's beautiful out today, mm -hmm. and you start to do it, he's gonna be sloppy. Mm -hmm. He's mm -hmm. gonna be full of energy, so excited to be out of the house. So if that happens, call us, mm -hmm. right? We can do a refresher lesson to, to re-solidify re that nice, beautiful heel with mm -hmm. the walking commands, mm -hmm. yeah. I wish you could go to Alaska. Have you ever been to Alaska? I have not. Okay, it's my beautiful. granddaughter lives in Alaska and she also rescues animals and Motley was hers and when Motley died she got another one. 
when she gets this huge, massive dog, and I'm on the phone with her, and I hear this <coughs> I said, oh my gosh, what is that? She said, I'm walking Bruno. I said, Victoria, it's 10 degrees. Yeah. <laughs> and she said, but I walk him every morning. And I'm going, oh my God, mm -hmm. number one, could I not live in Alaska at 10 degrees? Number two, the dog <laughs> would have to go out and pee and put himself back in the house. <laughs> number three, yes. do you have on a coat? Yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, but she has such a strict routine with yeah. her dog, and it and her dad's that way. They yeah. just they are very good parents to animals, yeah. which is I think the animal's personality often reflects how do you treat that animal. Yeah, one hundred percent. And the, that that routine, I love the word routine, because dogs are routine animals. Mm -hmm. If you change the dog's routine, you're going to have some behavioral pushback. It may mm -hmm. not be severe, but you're going to have some regression. They're going to be a little more stubborn because it's, it's, it's awkward. Mm -hmm. uh, I always say if dogs could live Groundhog Day, they mm -hmm. would um, <laughs> over and over again. Yeah. They would. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and it's kind of funny. You mentioned Alaska. Um, one of my good friends, Justin, he owns Off Leash Alaska. So we're, wow. we're, we're all over the country, uh, 188 locations. Um, but we have Off Leash North Georgia, obviously, from coming all the way up to Blue Ridge. Um, but off leash Alaska, they're out there working dogs in the snow and the ice. Isn't that crazy? Because it's a part of their daily routine. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah and it, and it's a good routine to, mm -hmm. to maintain it. I mean, I, I, that day I heard our boots crunching and I said, mm -hmm. "What is that?" Yeah. I'm walking Bruno. I yeah. said, "Oh my God." Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. No. 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 Yeah. Now, I have this thing when you when you have a baby and you go home with the baby, the doctors always say, give the baby his space, his baby bed. You don't put him in the bed with you, and mm -hmm. we've all made this mistake of letting oh, yeah. the baby sleep with us. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about people who allow their pets to sleep with them and then all of a sudden want to take that privilege away? How do you do that without the dog going like, uh, that was my space for a year, and now all yeah. of a sudden you got married, and he took my space, and what are you thinking about? Yes, so that goes back to that routine change. Yes. Um, and you get some behavioral pushback, mm -hmm. but it also, again, be more stubborn than your dog. Uh, if you want to have a place cut or dog bed at the foot of your bed or mm -hmm. you know in the corner of your room, 100% you can, It's but establishing a good command, such mm -hmm. as place, right? Mm -hmm. We teach the dog, place is a, is a long duration command. You gotta hold it for a while. Um, so if you do kick your dog out of the bed, that's perfectly okay. A lot mm -hmm. of people will go, that's my baby. I understand, I have babies of my own, yeah. but the big thing is that you are number one, your dog is number two, mm -hmm. not one A and one B, right? So <laughs> yeah. that's the big yeah. thing is that yeah. you can do it 100%, it does, it does not matter. Um, and I love my dogs, but I don't let my dogs in the bed. Yeah, I just, yeah, it's, it's just. We had nine yeah. at one time. I have never had a dog anywhere around the bed. I couldn't stand it. I would have a nervous breakdown. Mm -hmm. My kids didn't let their dogs sleep in the bed. You know, we just, we didn't do that. That's not a pattern we developed. As yeah. long so. as they have their own bed, they will be perfectly yeah, fine. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. And your dog just wants to see you, right? Yeah. So if we all got up right now and we all walked out of the room, I know for a fact driver would hold that place command for a good few minutes, but then he'd be left alone and he'd, and he'd go, be looking around he'd be, like, he'd be, he would panic. He'd be like, where's my people at? <laughs> yeah. Right. So that's a big thing. Your dog just wants to be with you. They don't yeah. have to be in your arms yeah. um, or, you know, in your pocket, or in your bed. But the big thing is just letting them know, hey, you can hold this command. You're going to be fine. I'll mm -hmm. be back in mm -hmm. 30 seconds. I yeah. think it's teaching them trust, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. To trust you. Confidence. Yeah. yeah. Driver yeah. has a ton of confidence. He's held this yeah. place command this whole time. He's beautiful. So the thing is, is that he has confidence in that if I hold this place command, I know he's not going to leave me. I know he's not going anywhere. Uh -huh, uh -huh. He just wants to see us and be with us. Uh -huh. Yeah. They love being part of the pack. Yeah. yeah absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Now let's tell people how to find uh, reviews about you on YouTube that show that yes. you have gotten some brats and you have turned them into really oh, good dogs. One hundred percent. So yeah. our website is blueridgedogtrainers.com. Mm -hmm. um, we have you can look us up on Google. I think we're at one hundred and forty-eight five-star reviews, mm -hmm. nothing less. Um, we're on Facebook as well, North Do North Georgia Dog Trainers, uh, Off Leash Canine North Georgia. Uh, we're also on Instagram, same mm -hmm. thing, North Georgia Dog Trainers, Off Leash Canine North Georgia. Mm -hmm. um, and our YouTube channel, same thing, Off Leash Canine North Georgia. Yeah. Um, we have hundreds of videos before and after, it doesn't matter. Poodles and doodles and shepherds and labs, GSPs, rescues, mutts, uh, chihuahuas, Yorkies, Shih Tzus, doesn't matter. Uh, any age, any breed, any size, we can train it, mm -hmm. right? And mm -hmm. every training, um, we have strict training programs, but we can modify per the dog, right? Because mm -hmm. you're not mm -hmm. going to take your little Yorkie on a 
five mile hike, mm -hmm. right? But you, you are gonna take maybe your German Shepherd or your GSP on yeah. a five mile hike. Yeah. So we specify each training program strictly to what your dog needs and what your goals are with the dog. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. One of the first things you and I talked about was the doodle breed because yes. um, I have a friend who they have two doodles and they walk them every single day. And then I told you about Freddie the Freeloader, the dog that yeah. we <laughs> met when we had their property listed. Yeah. And he was so quiet and he was so gentle mm -hmm. and he was so, but he was big. He was a um, Labradoodle and he, he was so cool and I never heard him speak. Well, we had an open house one day and people were coming and going and I thought, this dog's finally gonna bark. No, yeah. he didn't. And then that very day, I put him outside to use the bathroom yeah. and the little bitty yapping dog next door came out and I heard Freddie speak and I yeah. said, oh. So a dog made him vocal, but people, he just cool, calm and collected. Yeah. She said he'd never had any training, but he, he to me, he acted very much like a trained dog. Yeah. So. And that, and that comes back to temperament, mm -hmm. right? Not every shepherd is like Ozzy. Not every doodle is like Freddie the Freeloader, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, they're all so different. Yeah. Um, it's just how they're made, you know? Um, just like I say, you know, every German Shepherd in the litter of 10 doesn't need to be a personal protection dog, mm -hmm. right? Maybe none of them do. Mm -hmm. um, but it's all about how you start when you first get the dog. If you set a standard, you're gonna mold the dog's temperament a little bit better, mm -hmm. personality, mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. what lifestyle you wanna live, right? Mm -hmm. If you're lazy with it and not consistent, the dog's gonna go crazy, right? Mm -hmm. And the big thing we get is a bunch of um, play biting stuff mm -hmm. with puppies. There's a handful of ways to correct that, right? Give us a call and we can help you out. Mm -hmm. um, but it's a puppy, that's a big mm -hmm. thing, is like mm -hmm. this is the most difficult time to raise your dog. Mm -hmm. um, and with the doodles, <laughs> the number one con uh, issue I get calls with with doodles is the jumping. Mm -hmm. They're jumping, jumping, jumping. Well, doodles are cute, fluffy, and cuddly, right? Mm -hmm. What do we do with cute, fluffy, cuddly little puppies? We pick them up and we carry them around everywhere. Mm -hmm. So that little puppy is now no longer a 10 pound little mm -hmm. fur ball. Mm -hmm. It's now a 60 pound doodle yeah. full of energy. And it's like, pick me up, pick me up, pick me up. So yeah. the big thing, let your puppy walk. <laughs> yeah. Let your puppy be a dog. Yeah. Uh, Cause doodles, that's probably the biggest thing is separation anxiety and jumping issues, wow. right? And we have ways to help with that. Does your do you have children? No. Okay. Okay. When my um, when my first little great grandbaby was coming, his mom was expecting, and they had a pit bull. Mm -hmm. I was terrorized. I was so terrorized. That pit bull laid on her stomach the whole time that she was expecting. From the moment of mm -hmm. birth, that pit was. Riker's best friend, mm -hmm. and Lily died recently. Oh, sorry. And for him to have to say goodbye to that dog. Yeah. Oh my God. It's heartbreaking. And everybody was like, you know, you can't have a pit bull around a, dog, a baby. You can't. Oh my God. Proved exactly the opposite. Mm -hmm. The way that dog was treated, and the way that she protected Riker even in the womb, mm -hmm. and then from the moment he was born, and as Lily was taking her last breath, Riker was with her. That's so hard because we lose our animals and it's tough yeah. but to explain that to a child who had had this pit bull that everybody was like, oh, it's a pit bull, it'll be mean. Oh, no, yeah. no, 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 no. Right. And it, it, it is all about how you treat your animal. Correct, correct. And again, um, a lot of people say, oh, that dog's just mean, that dog's just mean. There is a very, very small percentage of dogs, very, very small that have a neurological issue mm -hmm. that where they are just aggressive, where they mm -hmm. go after their own owners. It doesn't mm -hmm. matter how well mm -hmm. you raise mm -hmm. them. Chemical um, aggression. Yeah. Correct, yeah. correct. It's, it's, it's something they're born with, right? Because a lot, there's a lot of great, beautiful people in this world, but there's a small percentage that are truly cruel, evil people, right? Mm -hmm. Good place. Th same thing with dogs sometimes, mm -hmm. right? They're born a certain way, some wires in their brain are not connecting the proper way. So there is neurolo neurological stuff, but mm -hmm. that's a very, very small percentage. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but again, how you raise that dog and you treat the dog mm -hmm. and you know how it grows, you mold it just like a child, right? Mm -hmm. You show them right from wrong. You show them what you want and you reward it, right? Mm -hmm. um, so it's, it comes down to how you treat that dog from the early stages, mm -hmm. early mm -hmm. stages, yes. I know having the breeds of dogs that we had, people knew you don't get out of your car at their house because you don't know which dog's gonna approach you. Yeah. Because we had German Shepherds, we had Rottweilers, we had Boxers, and we had English Bulldogs. English Bulldogs would have just laid there and let you 
whatever. Yeah. The others would greet you and, and make sure you were a nice person or mm -hmm. you wouldn't get out of your car. Yeah. So, but um, I have a grandbaby now, a great grandbaby, who's 17, 18 months old. And from the moment that child was born, there's this little dog, his name is Zipper, mm -hmm. and he's vicious. He, he used to growl at me and get up on the couch and just from the minute Xana was born, he has been her protector. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, you were so mean to me, you little jerk. You yeah, know? yeah. And, and from the moment Xana was born, and, and I've got videos on YouTube, and people are like, I can't believe you let that dog get in her face, and da da, -da. Right. And they're like the best of friends. Yeah. But I'm still nervous about Zipper, because yeah. I remember how he used to growl at me. He's not very big, mm -hmm. but he had the vicious, that vicious growl, but it was a protection growl. Yeah. And it was, it was not, he never lunged at me or did yeah. anything like that, but it was that, it was, and, I respected him. Yeah, and the best thing we can do is try and evaluate your dog to the best we can. We don't know what the dog's thinking. We can't speak dog. Dogs don't speak English, <laughs> you know. Um, sometimes I think they do. <laughs> they do, they, some, sometimes, sometimes they certain do. words. But the big thing is, is that little dogs, it's very rare you see a little dog outside of, the, of its home. Mm -hmm. Little dogs are typically stay-at-home dogs, mm -hmm. right? So when somebody new comes in that doesn't belong in their house, mm -hmm. it's a routine change mm -hmm. and they get overexstimulated, they get excited. He gets on the arm of the couch. Yeah. <laughs> and <laughs> and we don't like that in my childhood. Yeah, yeah. yeah. we don't, yeah. <laughs> the dog doesn't know how to behave, right? Yeah. Unless the owner's got some training or shown them, hey, this is what I want, as such as go place, that's what I want, that's a command. Yeah. Right? We show the dog what we want. So a little dogs, a lot of them have social, socialization issues where they just don't get out of the house as much. Because mm -hmm. um, you go down here to LJ, there at the, the square, um, you see a bunch of labs and GSPs and shepherds and goldens and doodles, right? Those are medium to large breed dogs. You yeah. rarely see small dogs yeah. come out. So it's yeah. about socializing. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and, and I have watched as Xana grew and Zipper adjusted, you know, and, and they're just the best of buds. Yeah. And now he doesn't growl at me anymore. So I yeah. said, well, I guess it took having a baby around because yeah. now <laughs> he finally feels comfortable, but he was that little protector, yeah. you know. And, I believe and, it. And, and so he was doing his job, I yeah. guess, yeah. In, yeah. A, in a sense, yeah, it's unwanted behavior, but in a sense, yeah. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, we're gonna take a music break because I know somebody's sitting at home saying, oh, we haven't heard any music from Mr. <laughs> Ellinger today so why don't we do a song from Mr. LJ your very very favorite and uh, I will tell you we're getting close to having new CDs so y'all are going to be very happy very soon here we go <laughs> Coward in the service, he will find no place, so keep on the firing line. Well, you must fight, be brave against all evil. Never run or even lag behind. If you would win for the Lord and right, keep on the firing line. Life is but a labor for the master, dear. Help to banish evil and to spread good cheer. 
great you'll be rewarded for your service here so keep on the firing line well you must fight be brave against all evil never run or even lag behind if you would win for the lord and right keep on We're back now. We're going to get Trace to come out and get close-ups of these animals. And if you, let's talk a little bit about their age, their weight, and whatever, and, and tell people if you have this breed, what to expect, and if you have this breed, is there anything normal about these breeds that you can expect? Oh, yeah, 100%. Um, so <coughs> with a German Shepherd, right, whether you get a puppy or you get a rescue Shepherd, mm -hmm. the one thing about them is they are super loyal dogs, very loyal they're also territorial mm -hmm. so everyone's always like man he's so aggressive when someone comes to the house or he barks uh, a lot he's doing his job right he's bred to do that right yes. so having a good foundation of obedience when that UPS man pulls up or your friend pulls in the driveway you're able to call your dog back and have him come sit or lay down or place right, right. Um, and he's he's considered even though he's a household pet he's still the working dog mm -hmm. so he needs a lot of exercise <coughs> mm -hmm. he needs mental stimulation um, it's and, and that's the thing they they can be great with your own kids but they might not like any other kids or they don't want other kids playing with your kids because mm -hmm. he's territorial and protective um so that's a big thing is just knowing the dog you got mm -hmm. um and doing some research right mm -hmm. knowing what a german shepherd really is mm -hmm. and of course if you say he's play biting yeah he's supposed to because yeah. typically the german shepherd the belgian malinois they play with their teeth. They show their affection with their teeth. They're naturally mm -hmm. mouthy dogs. Mm -hmm. So yeah, 100%. There's certain specifics to every breed. Mm -hmm. um, your yellow lab. Driver. Mr. He's Driver, so right? sweet. Yeah. He's so yeah. sweet. Labs, like I, like I said, and same for German Shepherds. They're, they're typically late bloomers with maturity. They're crazy. He's labs so precious. Are, <laughs> labs are known to be chewers, right? Yeah. So if you give enough toys or mental stimulation to help the the, the chewing throughout you know six months to a year year and a half two years it helps and doesn't destroy your furniture mm -hmm. you know uh, and labs well, what are they supposed to usually be for they're hunting Look at dogs that. He's so precious. <laughs> they're hunting dogs so he needs that mental stimulation yeah. in a good workout of making your dog think using your obedience go out to the yard and practice come sit down place mm -hmm. heal with different durations and distances the mental workout for a dog is more strenuous than them going out and playing with a ball mm -hmm. um, is if you make your dog think they're going to be exhausted make mm -hmm. your dog think yeah don't just throw the ball yeah. make them yeah. sit and throw the ball or yeah. spin around or whatever 100%. yeah yeah now have y'all had any cocker spaniels we i've worked with some 
Okay, we used to raise Cocker Spaniels, and I will tell you, those little boys are vicious. <laughs> we had some that I was like, oh my gosh, because you always think they're so cute, they'll love families. No, they often don't like children. They often don't even like their owners. They're so precious, but were they bred for specifics? What were Cocker Spaniels for? Hunting dogs, or what were they? Cocker Spaniels, I mean, from, from what I can recall about that specific breed, um, it was more of a uh, wealthier class dog, mm -hmm. more of like a mm -hmm. show dog. That's what mothers do. Um, yeah. yeah, so the big thing with them is that they have more of an independent personality. Mm -hmm. um, look at like a husky. Huskies, mm -hmm. are, I would say, are probably the furthest thing from a dog. Mm -hmm. They're independent thinkers. They mm -hmm. don't like to listen. Mm -hmm. They're trainable, but mm -hmm. huskies are a free spirit. Yeah. If you open that door and give them an open field, they're going to run and chase and play and everything. I would mm -hmm. say they're like a cat. Mm -hmm. Yeah, huskies mm -hmm. are almost like cats, right? Oh, wow. So for like a cocker spaniel, right, it's a lap dog. It's yeah. meant to be a lap dog. Yeah. 100% um, trainable, right? Mm -hmm. Have a certain expectation. But the big thing is, it's a lap dog. Um, he's he's not going to go on a five mile hike like mm -hmm. Ozzy would. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, they, they they are independent. They like their one person to be on the lap and being held and being touched. Yes, yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Well, thank you both for being here today. Of it's course. you know, time flies. Um, I loved I loved when I met Ozzy, and I was so excited that he had such a great disposition so quickly yeah. because I know that when we got ours, we felt like it was too late to reprogram them because. You know, they'd been trained by a GBI officer. They mm -hmm. had been in different positions, and I just didn't feel like we could do anything with them. But it's good to know that if somebody yeah. has a problem animal, yeah. give them your phone number and tell them how to pick up the phone and call you. Yes, absolutely. So you can contact me at 513-292-6823. That's my personal cell phone number. Uh, I get a ton of calls. Um, and if, typically, if I don't answer, shoot me a text. Uh, yeah. I, I more than likely have a leash in my hands. Yes, um, I was going to say you're working. Yes, or they can <laughs> yeah. email us at Blue Ridge Dog Trainers, uh, sorry, at Blue Ridge at OLK9 dot com. Yep. There you go. Yep. There you go. And from um, when I met you in Ball Ground, um, you live in Cumming, is that yes. right? So yep. from Forsyth County northward. Yes, yeah, exactly. There you go. Yeah, we there have you go. Uh, I have trainers. I have a full staff. Uh, Brandon and I live in Cumming, but we have trainers in Canton. Dallas, Cartersville, all the way up to uh, here in LJ, Blue Ridge, and Blairsville. Mm -hmm. um, and we get a lot of clients even from Murphy, North Carolina. Mm -hmm. um, so we have clients come from all over. I think we've had clients, uh, I've had a client come from Ohio uh, to get some training. I've had clients come from South Carolina yeah. and North Carolina. So, um, but yeah, we're. It's good to know that there is hope for that problem child that you 100%. brought home, and all of a sudden, yeah. it's, you know, we didn't even touch on this, but that peeing on stuff and marking stuff is something. Yes. Oh, man. That's, that's a whole other hour conversation. <laughs> that's a whole other hour conversation. <laughs> We're going to have you come back again, maybe when you get two more that are as beautiful and as yes. nice. And Absolutely. these boys were the star of the show. They did a great 100%. job. 100%. Yeah, yes. yeah. It could be because their trainers told them what to do. What do y'all think? <laughs> It's, we'll, I just hold the leash. He does the work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, tomorrow, Miss Hilda Thomason is going to be with us, and we're going to be talking about the North Georgia Fair. You know what happens when the North Georgia Fair comes to town? Tourists come, and lots of money comes into the area. So be nice, be open, get your business ready, because when the North Georgia Fair, we shine in Georgia. And she advertises from the Florida line northward and people come by the droves and uh, she's going to tell us just who's going to be at the fair this year and I can tell you she's got some great talent coming. I'll see you again tomorrow only on ETC. Okay, now